I do want to watch this millionaire goes homeless to prove anyone can make a million dollars video. It's like been sitting on my on the back side of my brain. Today has been really tough. This is uh, my bench right here. I'm gonna be sleeping on tonight, so. This is Mike Black, the millionaire who went homeless with the goal to make $1 million from nothing in only 12 months while documenting the entire journey online for everyone to see. I'm cutting off my entire network. I'm draining my bank account to zero dollars. I'm leaving behind my seven figure business, putting all my belongings in storage, and I won't even have a place to live. This is the million dollar comeback. Did you know the project is gonna be like this? No, everything was a curveball. This is my one pair of clothes that I'm taking with me. I have a cell phone and I have a backpack with camera gear. The keys are officially turned in. The project has started. Cell phone? Yeah, homeless people have cell phones, weirdos. What the f what are you talking about? Here's what I gotta point out here. First of all, there is 0% chance. I mean, less than 0% chance. There's negative chance that this is real, okay? Like full-blown real. Like he he actually was just like straight up living the the homeless like or, or vagrant lifestyle, okay? No fucking shot. One immediate takeaway that I find rather funny is that like, can you imagine just like, you know, doing tourism for a fucking year, like experiencing homelessness for a year for funsies and also... Actually, that's it. That's just, I don't believe this at all. Um. See, it was the beginning of 2020 and countless people had lost everything. And he wanted to be a living example that you can make a comeback even at your lowest point. But could he really reach $1 million in 12 months again? Everything I tried didn't work. I did have someone message me on Craigslist that said, they'll give me a, a hundred bucks if I let them but there was no going back now. He had publicly committed all over social media, hired an entire production team, and this was about something bigger than just himself. The goal of the project what? is to help his back. LMAO, he really did it. He sucked one. <laughs> Stop, dude. He forgot to take off his whiteness. Shut up. That doesn't mean anything in this situation. If you're fucking homeless, being white or black, like, yeah, being black increases your chances of experiencing police brutality, but you're still fucked, okay? That's ridiculous. The point is he has a fucking camera crew around him. This is reality television. It's not real. Whatever you say, dude, you're crazy. Like, what, you, what are you going to fucking go talk to white homeless people about white privilege? Like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? Jesus Christ, dude. That is, I'm sorry. That's like insane. You're an insane person. The only people that white homeless people are more privileged uh, than are black homeless people, okay? That's like, you know, they're pretty fucked regardless. Holy shit, dude. Jesus Christ. Like, what are you talking about? But the point is, he's not homeless, okay? That's the fucking point. Not actually homeless. Out of nowhere, like, this kid hit me up and said, like, hey, man, you can crash here. Offered to drive 30 minutes to uh, pick me up. Oh, no, he's going to really get murdered. emotional how nice of an act this was. Uh, this is the RV that I slept in last night. What I started doing is just taking ads on Craigslist in the free section, putting it on Facebook Marketplace and selling it for a profit. I acted as the middleman, handling all the logistics between the buyer and the seller. And it worked. I just sold my first couch for a hundred bucks. Although this- I literally, I hate this more than anything else. Hey, homeless people, just fucking resell people's trash. How did he find this RV? How did he randomly stumble upon a person who just, you know, offered him a place to live? There is so much going on here that like, again, that we're just like pushing past. I need to understand, homie, how are you in the shower right now? How did he get a phone in the internet? No, like you can have a phone. A lot of homeless people have phones. Most homeless people still have fucking phones and they can get internet off of like Starbucks or whatever the fuck, that's fine. That's not that crazy. The crazy part about this is like him being able to shower, him having shelter, okay? When you're fucking homeless, like the number one problem is a home, shelter, okay? Homie was out one night and was like, oh man, what the fuck are we gonna do? And he's like, okay, never mind. I just found this RV magically. He, he fundamentally eliminated the largest problem of being homeless, which is not having a fucking home in a shower. So, hey, you know what this video only proves? You want to eradicate homelessness? Give them fucking homes. You want to eradicate homelessness? Give them private homes that they can live in and shower in. Boom. Homelessness fucking eradicated. Didn't need, you know, 360 other days to figure out how to fucking deal with it. Day two and this motherfucker de dealt with it already. Woo! Let's go. We solved it, dude. We fucking solved it. Most people without homes, couch surf. The majority of people without homes don't live on the street. Oh, thank you for describing to me of all fucking people 
how the 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 tier system of homelessness i know dumbass that doesn't change the reality though okay because they ultimately get to that level okay that is the problem we're talking about people who are couch surfing or living out of their fucking cars okay couch surfing you still have a fucking shower that's the first tier of homelessness how many times have i talked about this but then you move on to your car if you have a fucking car and that is when you are no longer of a home you don't have a fucking shower you don't have anything anymore this guy eliminated the biggest fucking problem of homelessness which is not having a home this guy's a hack but gyms provide showers i know that chatter i know except the difference is when i'm in fucking new york okay and i want to hop in a quick shower i have a fucking equinox membership and i can do that when you're a homeless person you can't figure out what, what gym is going to be like yes why yes homeless person with zero dollars in your bank account please step right into our fucking shower and take a nice hot one dude hey mike what do you got there that's a nice computer yeah that's just a brand new used chromebook i'm gonna take that i hate this i applied to 10 different jobs in one night and the next day i woke up and i had three interviews so he spent the last 40 dollars he had to join a co-working space where he could use much better computers and start trading time for money even if that means working as a telemarketer for only ten dollars an hour bro again again notice how everything changed when he actually got a place of place to be able to live and the homie literally offered him permanent housing notice how this isn't about fucking homelessness at all because the fundamental flaw of homelessness is or the fundamental problem of homelessness is being devoid of a home and now he actually literally does have a fucking house when people talk about homelessness being like uh, couch surfing and whatnot okay that's true Except when we think about homeless people, we're not thinking about people that are fucking couch surfing. We're thinking about the people literally living in fucking uh, on the street. Now, there's also another underlying problem here. The background that this motherfucker has. Remember what I've always told about told to you about uh, rich people. We're coming from an affluent family does not mean like the, the, the advantages of coming from an affluent family do not show itself in the form of a fucking trust fund or when your parents die and you get fucking money because they died and they left you like this fat, you know, uh, television uh, show style inheritance. It comes from the fact that they, that your spawn point and your affluent beginnings, and this is something I talk about with my own personal experience, come from the educational opportunities that you've gotten. So just remember that that is absolutely something that uh, plays a, a significant role here as well. Yeah, he also has good credit, a good social background, all of this stuff that uh, that that comes along in most circumstances with homelessness. How the fuck do you become homeless? You think it happens magically? No, because you're fucking debted. You have debt. I put the dollar amount in my fucking account to like 94 cents. It's like, okay, how about minus $200,000? Or how about however much fucking uh, debt that you're personally in and a fucking dog shit credit score? So I went over to Isaac. I was like, hey, would you be cool with lending me your car and I'll do food delivery? I'll give you the majority of everything I make. He just had to get one client for some service that would pay him a few grand. I literally just spent all weekend. I sent so many sales proposals until he finally got someone to pay him for monthly marketing services. 1500 bucks. Dopamine's just blasting through my head. I, I have money now. So he was able to move out of the RV into a small shared room. I'm fucking losing my mind. Every part of this fucking video that is like the fundamental leap somehow mysteriously happens, dude. I'm sorry, but this is so fucking disrespectful and so psychotic that you really have to be a fucking loser who who loves the sigma grind set videos on a daily basis who's like already caught up in like some kind of fucking multi-level marketing scheme to legitimately believe anything that's happening here but even if you were to take it at face value as though it's fucking real oh i have to live in a home now this fucking sucks what did i do oh i magically found a fucking uh, a person who would listen to my marketing proposals oh that's sick man so you're saying luck in both of the circumstances where you made significant leaps from going homeless to having an RV shelter over your head or from going from literally being jobless and flipping fucking uh, Legos like your goddamn Gary V to like getting a marketing job. Again, luck. Both of those situations required fucking luck. So even if we are to believe everything you're saying, which I don't, okay, that's ridiculous. It's literally just fucking still luck. So what is a good government supposed to do? I love this video, by the way. This video is proving all of my points. Holy, holy fuck. This video is like agitprop. The government, a good government that is supposed to fucking care about its own citizens should make sure that in an absence of luck, because that is the most significant factor here, that something, a social safety net is supposed to take care of you. You too can become an overnight millionaire sensation, folks, if the government 
was doing its fucking job because we don't have luck in the real world. Not everyone is lucky. So what do you have to do? You have to, you can't make your own luck. What do you have to do in that situation? You have to have someone else take care of you in the same way that fucking daddy luck took care of this man. I was spending it 40 to 60 hours a week on production and marketing and running the production team alone while I was homeless in the beginning of the project. I remember being in meetings with the guys and I'd be like, I haven't eaten today. I don't have money to get back to the RV park. I got to get out of this meeting and you guys have to figure it out because if I don't flip a couch today, I have to sleep at the office. Oh, so he can sleep at the office if he fucking didn't have a home. That's cool. That's, that's again, homeless people do have that opportunity as well. They can just sleep at their fucking office. No, I got it. No, this is a very real video. If you're a fucking dumbass, dude, are you homeless? You fucking loser. Oh, dude, dude, you're homeless. Just have a fucking studio and an office and have people work for you. Imagine being fucking homeless in a situation where you can just instead magically have an RV that alleviates like the most significant problem that you have, which is not having a fucking home. And then, uh, you know, have a car as well from that same guy that helped you with the house situation. Use that fucking car to, to go get a fucking a job, okay? Ultimately, magically get a fucking job where you're, you know, shilling people marketing products or whatever the fuck. It's great, dude. This is great. This is cool as fuck. This is how it works, dude. This is the most, this is the grossest fucking video I've ever seen. Holy shit. $25,000 burned per month on producing the project and marketing it. Paying for it out of his own pockets. I only spent one hour on my business. This has been a consistent theme. I'm not gonna be able to build a million dollar business like that. I'm so tired. I just got word. The client decided to, I guess, fire us. He had to get really strategic with his time and money. Either cut expenses to invest more into launching the e-commerce business or invest money to save more time. For example, by hiring freelancers. So I'm still working on the homepage site. Jay, the Jay, there's, you logged two and a half hours. You said you're gonna log a full day today, dude. We need to get this site up. <sighs> I hate this man. He literally outsourced the fucking Fiverr. He, he went to like fucking Fiverr and he's like screaming at a Fiverr guy. This is so, this is so great. Hey guys, are you homeless? Just again, Get a fucking MacBook, get all this stuff, use all this stuff to your advantage, magically find clients that are going to be inv involved in your like Ty, Ty Lopez style uh, fucking marketing business and then exploit labor overseas. What the fuck? Come on, outsource it, dumbasses. But out of desperation, Mike came up with a brilliant idea. They would not just cut his biggest expense, but might actually make him money. I am finding a location. Let's say it's $4,000 a month to rent. I'm gonna rent out four of the bedrooms for $1,000 a month. So it pays for the place. And then that fifth bedroom I would get for free. That is what I call rent hacking. This is a four story place. This is gonna be my room, walk-in closet here. This would be my bathroom. I'd be going from RV park to this. Three months. I made this like a podcast room or something. Wow, this place is big. Dog, if you're homeless, how the fuck are you able to rent a house, dumbass? Hey, bro, do you have bad credit? Are you having a hard time fucking being homeless? Hey, just rent a house, dude, with a podcast room and then rent it out to all the other homeless buddies. This is the worst thing I've ever seen, okay? Homies out here with fucking 800 credit, okay? Pristine. Motherfucker, I, I was making a shitload of money. And even then I couldn't fucking rent a house because I had bad credit. What the fuck is this guy talking about? I didn't have a credit card. Okay, it's not like I had debt or anything. I didn't have a credit card. So I had bad credit. And places would literally be like, you can't even pay us 12 months rent. We don't want 12 months rent. We will not let you rent a place because you have bad credit. Homies out here like, what, what do you mean? Uh, just fucking rent a four bedroom apartment. Are you homeless? Just rent a four bedroom apartment after you have a successful marketing business that you launched with other employees now magically and a place of work and because his fake identity scott doesn't have a good credit score he just found someone to co-sign it if you haven't noticed the pattern this is not like a how to fix your life video the most important part is to get a fucking co-signer again literally how you're skipping the most important fucking steps dog you can't do that. You literally can't be like, I, I fucking made a million dollars when I was homeless by being insanely lucky. Found a co-signer. Found a guy who would give him a car and a fucking RV and a place to shower literally one night in. Found clients that were willing to pay him thousands of dollars. You can't just be like, these simple steps I followed through and I'm no longer homeless. And like the most significant steps in the most significant hurdles magically always get eliminated by buddy of mine ass motherfuckers, dude. Pal of mine. I just met this guy. 
It's crazy. And also, the coffee brand was finally ready to launch. Oh, we're in business. We got coffee, baby. If you're like, I hate my job, I fucking can't stand my fucking job, quit. Save up some money, downsize, quit. Figure out what you want to do. And with roughly nine months left, maybe it was still possible to reach the million dollar milestone. There's a lot of people that have built a company in nine months have gotten into a million dollars. I'm healthy, my family's healthy, that's all that matters. On Tuesday, I learned that uh, my dad was officially diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. Yeah, they said it's in my lungs, my liver. Believe it or not, yes, it could be better, but also be much worse. To me, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. <laughs> Hey dad, did you get cancer? Time for some fucking content, baby. Let's go. Hey dad, speak up. Speak up about your cancer diagnosis. The video is not picking it up. What the fuck, dad? We've talked about this already, dad. Holy shit, what's wrong with you? This is why you have cancer, dad. So could he still reach the $1 million goal now that things got even more challenging? But they had a pretty good plan. Coffee is one of these consumables that people buy again and again if they love your brand. So setting up a monthly subscription would be a game changer. And if they could acquire new customers to try out their products, they might become long-term repeat buyers. Smile, dance, we put up our first tick. It's official, this is the worst video on YouTube, I think. This is pretty much the worst video on YouTube, I think. Like, there is no... There are videos on YouTube that are pretty bad. No, I'm not skipping. It's like the kind of cancer that I love subjecting my fucking self to and you guys as well. But this is exactly within my realm of interest, this kind of content. But also at the same time, it is straight up the worst kind of cancer as well. It's both the best kind of cancer and therefore the worst kind of cancer. It's a Sigma Grindset video that takes a fucking fat dookie on all of the fucking shortcomings and all of the horrible hurdles that like people that are simply priced out of the uh, housing market experience. Just get unimaginably lucky and you'll succeed forehead that's the that's what i got out of this story which is true i do agree with that whenever you're failing whenever you are you know when life deals uh, hardships to you let alone the real fear that you experience when you are actually subjected to homelessness because there is always that element of like if this shit fucks up and it ruins my life i'm just not going to do it anymore you're alleviating a big part of the trauma that creates the kinds of homeless people that you see on the fucking streets that trauma of truly not having any option, truly not having any other opportunity, that's what fucking breaks your brain. Yeah, braving the elements is is difficult, certainly. I wouldn't want to do it. I wouldn't want to fucking do that shit either. So, you know, that's fine. Braving the elements for one day until someone magically lifts you and uh, gives you a RV to live in with a shower, with a working, like working water, bro. That's so bananas. Like he fucking never even slept in on the street. He found a guy with an RV. Like, that's insane. And the guy didn't murder him. Like, what What the fuck? What are we talking about? Like, he was never even fucking homeless, dude. Like, yeah, his, his maximum experience with homelessness was pointing to a fucking bench. Yeah, just roll nat 20s all day, baby. And you'll be fine. Just keep rolling nat 20s. And the TikTok went semi-viral. Almost 3,200 followers. Holy shit. What? I think we got our first coffee club subscription. Oh my God. Just make a TikTok and have it go viral. Oh my God. Again. Look at every element, every fucking, every part of this, dude. God, okay, this video proves my point better than I ever could have. I could have literally sat around and thought about how to like perfectly explain to people meritocracy is a lie and the fundamental role that luck plays in people's success stories and people's failure stories and why the government needs to make sure that there is a true level of a base level of material equality in an effort to maximize productivity, even from a capitalist standpoint. If I wanted to make a video about that, I would have to, you know, think long and hard. Meanwhile, this guy just went and made it, dude. He went and made it. I love him for it. I straight up absolutely love this man. Thank you so much for making a whole ass fucking YouTube video, just straight up showcasing the factor of luck and the, and the necessity of, of government programs in one fucking video that you were trying to, to educate people on how easy it is to like get out of homelessness or some shit. Our ad account got disabled. This is what I do when I'm angry. So I made a list of things I'm grateful for. The first is Mark Zuckerberg. I'm grateful for big tech. So now I feel better. Okay, that was the grossest thing he said. That's like on par with the rest of the video. The rest of the video is gross, but that, no. This man should be in jail. I'm, in, I'm now in favor of criminalizing fake homeless people. 
Homeless people, take him out of jail. Put this man in jail instead. If you're fake homeless and you say, uh, thank you, Mark Zuckerberg, jail. Straight up. Throughout the entire project, we haven't shared it with you, but I've been in and out of the doctor's office. I actually have two autoimmune diseases. Even started developing a tumor on my hip. It's gotten to the point where I'm in pain every single day. Wait, how the fuck do you go to the doctor's office, dude? Wait, what? Wait, what? What the fuck? You have health care? You're going to the doctor's office? You're able to pay the doctor's office doctor's bill? Get the fuck out of here, dude. What is this bullshit, dude? You can't be fucking talking about how you're homeless and then you're fucking literally going to the doctor's office on the side? Get the fuck out of here, dude. You think that's the kind of fucking freedom that homeless people have? Are you fucking kidding me? That kind of debilitating fucking disease absolutely destroys people. It then also on top of that fucking plays into the original trauma that they already had, the trauma for the fucking fear of not being able to have shelter. You eliminated every single part of being homeless. You went glamping and you fucking considered it to be homeless, dude. You literally went glamping, dude. Get the fuck out of here. Yo, fuck this shit, dude. Straight up, fuck this bullshit ass fucking video, dude. Rich people literally have a fucking brain disease. I swear to God, conservative people, are brain dead? Rich people have like a brain disease that literally makes them think up shit like this, where they're just like, I'm gonna fucking do this, dude. It's gonna be sick. Look at this fucking idiot. While I'm talking about homelessness and how fucked up this shit is, look at this fucking idiot. If you're so mad, why don't you do giveaways? I give away this dick to your mother every night, you fucking piece of shit. Fuck you. You're grounded. I'm your stepfather now. I'm not your stepfather. I'm the father that stepped up. You're grounded. Seven month subscriber, dumbass. I wanted to help people that were struggling get back on their feet and prove that it could be done. A lot of things about this situation suck, but I'm in control of how I see things. Bro, I'm sorry, but like 90% of the problems with this video and how triggering this shit is would have been eliminated if he just didn't say like, I'm gonna be homeless from, uh, or, or I'm gonna start my uh, starting point as a homeless person. But even then the content would still revolve around like, I'm starting with zero dollars, okay? I'm starting with zero dollars. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so you're not starting with like minus dollars. No fucking debt. Even if he started off with a home and he said, I'm emptying out my bank account. I'm starting off with a fucking home, but like whatever. You know, a lot of people already have shelter or whatever. Even if he started off as that, it is psychotic because like the areas where he like takes these massive leaps, going from homeless to having shelter, going from shelter to actually having a home, finding a fucking person to actually co-sign his lease. These are the very real problems. These are the very real problems that stop people from actually being able to, to advance and get out of this issue, okay? And those very real problems have to be solved by the government. Don't get me wrong. And that's why he was able to avoid mental Ill, mental health issues. You know what I mean? That's how he was able to avoid addiction because he didn't have to self-medicate the fucking trauma that he was experiencing every day because he was like fearful that he doesn't, you know, he has to brave the goddamn elements all day. And more importantly, he had healthcare, dude. That's fucking bananas. That is absolute fucking bananas. Even if he said, I'm starting off with $0, then what the fuck? You magically found people that were willing to give you $1,000 because you wrote them an email? Anyone that has ever fucking cold called a day in their goddamn life. And I'm sure I have some sales andies in this fucking chat, like myself. Anyone who has ever fucking sent out cold calls and cold emails knows that that shit is fucking impossible. There is a level of uncertainty there. Even if you have a script ahead of time, even if you have a call sheet ahead of time, even then it is so fucking difficult to actually get someone to, to say yes to you. Okay. Especially when you're not even using like a brand or a well-established business that you can fucking Google. And this guy literally cold called and got like a thousand five hundred dollar contract. That's insane. And then he magically had a TikTok go viral. He got fucking, uh, you know, a coffee business. He was able to build a coffee brand. Sorry, dude. That, that stuff, even if this video was real, which it fucking clearly isn't, the fact that he was like, oh yeah, I just, you know, uh, you know, cold called uh, some people and built a coffee business and had a fucking studio and a place to work out of. Like, get the fuck out of here, found a co-signer, come on. Believed. That's what true leaders do. So he decided to end the project early to focus on fixing his own health and spending more time with his dad. And now he's doing a lot better and things are going really, really well. And who knows, maybe now with this video, Mike is able to impact 20,000 people. Wait, what? Wait, so he still failed. We have to read the comments on this. Some people are getting upset in the comments. The point of this was not to inspire homeless people or prove that they can easily make a million. As explained in the video, 
It was to show that the point uh, people in general can make a comeback, even if they lose everything. Yes, I know the title is a bold statement. Dog, the title isn't just a bold statement. The title is an outright lie. He was never homeless and he never made a million dollars. Every part of this title is false. But hey, guess what? Zero dislikes, 83,000 likes. What do I know? Clearly, thank you, YouTube. It seems like everybody liked it. Nobody fucking disliked it. So clearly, I'm gonna go ahead and assume everything on this video is fucking great. Weird though, you had a phone, someone to pick you up and let you crash, shower, have Wi-Fi, computer, and so on. Most homeless people don't have a phone, money to flip. Yeah, okay, people are actually calling this shit out, good. I'm glad. The one thing that people can't stand on the internet, no matter what the fuck uh, we're talking about, is phony people, okay? Like, no matter how much ho these people hate probably homeless people, like, is the automatic assumption is that homeless people are just not human beings. This guy's project was such a fucking fake that it triggered the primal response that YouTube Andes absolutely fucking despise more than the homeless people that they don't think are human beings. Oh, this is like starting a new character in GTA Online when you're already a 3,000 hours gamer. That's the only relatable thing I can compare it to. You already know exactly what to do and how to do it. Edit, I think some people are not understanding in the replies that experience is just as important as knowledge. You learned about something all you want until you experience it yourself, you will likely run into the problems or fail. Knowledge definitely helps a lot. I mean, technically he's not even fucking wrong if we're being honest, like he is kind of right about that. Not that this guy's like knowledgeable or experienced, but he is right about the fucking fundamental messages that like, yeah, if you have uh, already like scam motherfuckers with your sham of a marketing campaign in the past, you know what kind of fucking messages to send out and what works. Yeah, someone that has done a million fucking cold calls knows what kind of cold calls are going to work? What kind of cold emails are going to work? Anyway, that was awesome. That video was actually awesome because, you know, this was uh, the worst video of all time. The worst video on fucking YouTube, but it was actually very, very instructive.